Is your Galaxy Note 2 running a little slow these days? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is a before and after with an overclocked Galaxy Note 2. Some phones, especially those that are over encumbered with the TouchWiz interface and any accompanying software, tend to get a little laggy. As time goes on, you begin to install more applications and fill the internal storage, and performance begins to slip. And some smartphones ship with a little lag on the side. The Samsung Galaxy S4, one of the fastest and most powerful smartphones to date, lagged for us out of the box both times we reviewed it. Likewise, when it launched powered by a 1.6 GHz quad-core Exynos chip, the Galaxy Note 2 was one of the most powerful smartphones around. And it was snappy, back then. But I've been using the same model since October, albeit with various ROMs. And no matter how much I try to evade it, the lag persists. But like we've explained twice now, trying out a new kernel and overclocking the CPU can help the situation and stem any overbearing lag. For the Note 2, I perused forums in search of what at least appeared to be the most well-rounded kernel. Of course, you can never tell just from a description from its creator. The only sure-shot way to know how it works is to load it on your device and take it for a test drive. The kernel I chose is called Note to Core, which comes in three variations. Standard, Overclocked, and Extreme. Naturally, I went with the Extreme version. To install, simply download the kernel, reboot into recovery, flash the zip from SD card, wipe the cache partition, and wipe the Dalvik cache in the advanced menu. Before you start, be certain you're using a TouchWiz-based ROM, else you could put your device in a boot loop, or worse. If you're using CyanogenMod or an AOSP ROM, there are plenty of kernels for those builds as well. When you reboot, it will take longer than usual to start up, and you may want to use an application such as SetCPU to manage your CPU clock speeds in various governors or restrictions for how the CPU will work in different situations. I set the CPU to the maximum clock speed for this kernel, 1.8 GHz, and switched to the performance governor. Surprisingly, the overclocked Note 2's performance in synthetic benchmarks was markedly worse than the Note 2 running the stock kernel. In N22, while running at the stock clock speed, the Note 2 scored over 17,000, while the overclocked Note 2 at 1.8 GHz scored only 12,000. And it was a similar story in Geekbench 2, where the Note 2 with a stock clock speed managed between 1600 and 1900. The overclock Note 2 managed only 1500 in Geekbench 2. The performance in the SunSpider JavaScript test was more telling than anything. Before overclocking, the Note 2 scored around 1100 milliseconds in several runs of SunSpider. After overclocking, it scored 952 milliseconds. That could be explained by the configuration of this specific kernel. But benchmarks don't always directly translate to real-world performance, and it's comparisons like these that lend credence to that statement. Before overclocking, my personal Note 2 unit wasn't exactly slow or terribly laggy, but there was definitely some noticeable stuttering when opening the covers in Action Launcher, opening the app drawer, and in scrolling in different applications. After flashing the new kernel and overclocking, the performance is ever so slightly better. Applications seem to open somewhat quicker than before, and once inside applications, the data seemed to propagate faster. The difference isn't substantial, but it's definitely noticeable. On the home screen, covers open very smoothly when compared to the stock clock speed in kernel, where the opening animation appears jittery and hesitates just a split second. Switching between applications was never an issue before, and it happens very quickly after the fact as well. In Chrome, scrolling appeared snappy on both, as did pinch zooming and swiping between tabs. There was no noticeable checkerboarding on either. Overall, the performance after overclocking is slightly better than before. It's nothing major, however. It's just a small improvement. In all, if you're having trouble with performance on your Galaxy Note 2, overclocking isn't going to turn your phone into some powerful super phone. But it will certainly help iron out some of the kinks and improve overall performance. The numbers may not show it, but the real-world performance certainly does. That's all we've got for now, so if you enjoyed the video, be sure to click the thumbs up button below and subscribe to see more videos like this one in the future. Also, follow us in your favorite social channels, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin. You can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I'll see you next time.